headed for a quick evening fishing trip. Got the new kayak loaded up on the trailer. Um, I've only got, it's 7.04 right now. I've only got until about nine o'clock before I need to get off the water before it gets too dark. Um, I'm headed to Ulaga Lake. There's a small marina right next to a boat ramp. I'm just gonna fish that marina. Hopefully I can catch at least a few fish. If not, at least I get to get my new kayak on the water and get a feel for it. Um, I'm hoping it's been really sunny, really warm these last few days. So I'm hoping that maybe some fish have moved up underneath those docks for some shade. But we'll find out. Hopefully I can catch at least a couple fish. Even if I don't catch any fish, it's all right. Get to get the new kayak, a feel-free lure 13.5 on the water. Uh, just kind of get a feel for it. So far, I took it on one of the small ponds and uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. So far, I mean, I would recommend that boat to anybody whose budget will allow it. I mean, whether it's the 11.5, the 10-footer, or the 13.5, that boat's pretty pretty stable I like it so but all right well we'll get back at you whenever we get to when I get to the water and hopefully we get some fish well, as you can tell I'm on the water I had to wait for the stinking boats to come down get done loading and unloading and stuff so well, hopefully I can catch some fish New boat's paddling pretty good. Do what? Nice, uh, Thank you. Compliments on the kayak. Notice some of these docks have signs that say no fishing within 50 feet. Which is ridiculous. Real easy. It's not hard at all. Yeah. Do what? Yeah, they can stand up and everything. Yeah. I don't understand how that sign's even legal. No trespassing within 50 feet of private dock. Trespassers will be prosecuted. How they own the water 50 feet around their dock. I have a feeling that that would be a hard one to stand up in court. I'm gonna fish this shoreline over here. And these sailboat people are raging assholes. There's another one of those 50 feet. Smile while you're on camera, video surveillance in progress. I call bullshit on that. But this cove looks really promising, so. That. These yuppity bastards. Too cool for school. They don't want anybody fishing around there. Fancy boats that they take out once a year. This boat is so stable. <laughs> Even standing sideways, I'm standing however I want to. Crazy. One picked it up. Got him.
first fish. I don't know what it is. Oh, it's a little largemouth. All right. Didn't get skunk today. Come here, you. All right. Didn't get suckers. That's a spotted bass. That's not even a largemouth. That's the first spotted bass I've caught in years. Years. I'll show you the difference between a spot and a largemouth. A lot of times on the pattern you can tell this guy's kind of dark, so it's kind of hard to tell on his pattern. But I'll show you the, the main thing. The main difference between a spot and a largemouth. First main difference. So you can see, it. see that little dark spot on his tongue right there? It's a little tooth spot. Kind of see it, hopefully. And the second thing is when their mouth is shut. See how the hinge of their jaw is even with their eye? A large mouth is going to be back here, past the eye. So yeah, this is the first spotted bass I've caught in years. I think the last spotted bass I caught, I was probably 15 or 16 years old, and I'm 31 now. So <laughs> it's the first spotted bass in a long time. Cool deal. That's awesome. I'm going to get a link on him just so I know how long he is. Just out of curiosity. He's probably only 13 inches or so. Maybe not even 13. Hey, he would count. He is 12, just over 12 and a quarter. Cool deal, man. I'm excited. I caught my first spot in forever. Caught him right off of that big log over there. There you go. There he goes. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, I haven't caught a spot in so long. It's so cool to catch one. I've never fished this area. I wonder if there's a lot of spots in here. So I'm going to catch another couple fish. Oh, that was so cool. So cool. Got him on the plasma tail. Just a weightless Texas rig. Just throwing it in on the cover and twitching it a little bit. Had a couple bites. That was the first one I got a hook into. Alright, see so if we can catch some more fish. That was cool. First thing I thought when I picked him up is like, I thought, man, he's got a tiny little mouth. And then I saw the tooth spot on his tongue. I realized he was a spot. That's so neat. Let's see if there's another one on there. I caught him right there on the edge of this big log. We've got sand bass or something chasing shad over here. I'm going to try to get over here and get on them. Further out there. You can see this little shad on the surface. Oh, I can't see anything in the camera. On, there's one right there. Running right at me. <laughs> oh, little sand bass. Little sand bass. Oh, I didn't bring a stringer. Otherwise, I'd keep this little sucker. I love these guys. My absolute favorite eating fish. Come on, dude. I cut some of your little friends. 
He's the little, ow. Damn, the fins are sharp. I'm gonna catch some more of his buddies over here. Oh, right through him. Right. Oh, I missed that one. There's one. Right there. Oh, he got off. There's one right there. Ooh, this one's got, this one might be a little bigger. Man, I wish I brought a stringer. <laughs> oh man, this is awesome. They aren't big, but they're fun. Spots and sand bass. Two fish I haven't really caught a lot of in the last few years. Catching a bunch today. I want to catch a couple big sand bass. Put some back here behind me. Right in the middle of them. There's one right there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Come on. That's some about the same size as the others, I think. Hard to tell. Might be about a little bit bigger. Fish that were busting looked a little bit bigger. Oh, yeah, this one might be. This one might be good sized. Out there, right in the middle. It's almost a guarantee when they're doing that. Oh yeah, this is a good eater size. It's almost a guarantee when you see them busting like that. Oh, don't pin me. If you throw in there, you're gonna catch them. Almost a guarantee. Because when you see those fish busting, there's a bunch more that are underneath them, waiting on their opportunity for an injured fish. So if you're that injured fish, you get bit. That's a good eater size. Oh gosh. Come here. I bet you they do this almost every night. There's freaking goats over there on that shoreline over there. Anyways, there we go. Let this guy go. That's the biggest one so far. Catch some more. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm just blind casting. And then when I see them blowing up, I'll throw to them. There's one blowing up right there. You can't see nothing, but oh man, they're blowing up right here by the boat. Gosh dang. Y'all want some sand bass? If you paddle over here, I've been catching a bunch of them. There you, go, that's awesome. you want some? I'm letting them go. Yeah, definitely. He's got his okay, I'm just letting them go. I figured I'd see if you guys wanted one or two.
This is a good fish right here. I'm going to give some of these to these guys that are camping over here on the shoreline here. Got some blowing up back here. Blowing up behind me again. Never fails. There's another one. Feels like a good one too. I've got three of them for you. Make that four. Ah, that's one. Oh, never mind. Three. Came back here in this little cove. It's right by the boat ramp. Figured I'd see if I could catch one more fish. And I did. All right, looks like a little largemouth. It is a little large mouth. So, got three different species today. That's pretty neat. A little large mouth, a little spot, a bunch of sand bass. Go. Caught him on the same thing I caught the little spot on. Plasma tail, Texas rig, weightless. There's a bunch of these little uh, vegetation sticking up. And I'm basically just casting into that vegetation, just working my worm through there. Nothing special. We'll give it a couple pop pops and then let it sit. And pop pops and let it sit. And he hit it after I popped it a couple times. I thought I felt that I missed one, or one had it, and I didn't set the hook. I almost couldn't tell, but I'm sure it probably was one now. I just thought maybe it, I was imagining that there was a fish on it. Not a bad day of fishing so far. I uh, caught that one spot, caught a little largemouth. Caught a bunch of sand bass. I, I didn't even keep count of the sand bass. I'm gonna have to watch the video back to see how many I even caught. I mean, I probably caught eight or more at least, and I barely got into them. I missed a lot of the first blow ups because I had to paddle over to them. I think a fish has got it. I can't tell. Nope, it was just hung on a limb. Um, I mean, if I'd have been sitting right there when they first started blowing up, it probably would have been a different story. Probably would have. I wish I had a stringer. If I had a stringer with me, I would have kept a bunch of them myself. But I don't have a stringer, so I didn't keep any. Those guys that were camping over there seemed like they enjoyed getting a couple sand baths. So a nice guy paddled out. He just happened to have kayaks, so he paddled out to me and got them from me. So let's we'll see if I can catch another fish or two, maybe before it gets dark. But if not, you know, oh well, did good today. Not bad for being on the water. I got, when I got my boat in the water, it was 7.17. So, I mean, I really didn't get a lot of time to fish today. But it did good. The boat did awesome. God, the boat did great. Um, better than I could have ever expected. Stand up easy. It's easy to paddle in comparison to my other boat. I mean, it's not going to win any freaking speed contest, but that's not why I got it. I didn't get it to be fast. I got it to be stable and be a good fishing platform. And it's definitely delivers on that part. Definitely delivers.
most stable kayak I've ever been on. Love the rudder. <coughs> I definitely recommend this boat to anybody whose budget allows it. And if you get it, don't skimp, get the rudder. You're gonna want it, I promise you. Because you paddle somebody else's boat that has it, you're gonna be like, dang, I need to get the rudder for my boat. So you might as well just get it when you get the boat and be done with it. That way you don't have to worry about it. They install it for you. You don't have to do it yourself. Not that it looks like it's very hard, but just it's easier just to have them do it. Have it installed when you get it. And go right out. Right out on the water. One cautionary tale. <coughs> I breathed in a bug. One cautionary tale I will say about the seat. As soon as you get it, uh, take your bolts out one at a time. Put some blue Loctite on it, and put them back in. Take them out one at a time because this seat's actually under a little bit of tension, where the legs meet together. So you go popping all the screws out, it'd be probably a pain in the butt to get them back in. So. But put blue Loctite on them and your seat will be good. Um, don't tighten them down all the way. You want to leave just a little bit of wiggle room between the pieces of metal. Um, just because if you tighten it down all the way, then the seat doesn't have anywhere to move. So, but that's one thing I would recommend everybody doing when they get one. And I mean, if you can afford a, a lure, definitely, definitely get it if you're a bass fisherman, anyways can't speak for any of the ocean guys i think that's why they make the moking but anyhow this will be the sign off i guess kind of babbled on but it's a good day fishing in a good boat had fun it's getting too dark to really see what i'm doing now so i'm about to load up and head home see you guys later until next time